Put the rye in the honey and the honey in the rye. Did that song already. Let's go. Hey, it's Brain Muffin back with another beer review. And up today we have a Sam Adams. And I believe this is the last one in the seasonal pack, except for the horrible Boston Lager, which I've already reviewed. And today we have Honey Rye Pale Ale, and uh, it's a lightly hopped with hints of honey and spice. That's what it says. Let's find out. Ooh. It's definitely a pale ale. Nice hop aroma. Not a whole lot of honey. But uh, there's a bit of a... Yeah. It's like a... Almost like an IPA aroma on that. But uh, nice and clear. We've got the Sam Adams glass glowing for, going for us. Very nice golden color. Kind of a deep golden. Very nice pale ale so far. It's got like hints of grass. And um, almost, it's like something that wants to be citrus but isn't quite there. It's the rye. It's the rye spiciness. That's where the spiciness is coming from. The rye malt. It's got a nice, very good pale ale mouthfeel. It has a good amount of bitterness at the back end. But man, I don't get any honey whatsoever. It might be too warm. This has been sitting out a while, unfortunately. It has a coloring like honey. Yeah, maybe mid-mouth there's like a hint of some sweetness and a little bit of honey, but not a lot. It has a very dry finish. It has, um, I think it's only like four and a half, five percent alcohol, I think. Let's go back. Um, I'm, you know, I looked it up on Untapped and I, and I, I know it showed the, yeah, five, okay, five percent. 5.8% uh, alcohol is what it lists. It feels like it's bigger than that. No, right there at the bottom, 5.8%. 33 IBUs. Um, it tastes more bitter than that. And that might be the rye malt kind of playing with, with the things, but... Mm. But... Um, to me, it's a good four out of five, maybe four and a quarter if I'm pushed a little bit. But I really get no hints of honey whatsoever. And I'm really trying to pick that out. If you told, if you didn't tell me this had honey in it, I would say it's a rye pale ale. It's got nice thickness that you'd expect from almost like an IPA. Not quite, but it's a bit more than a standard pale ale. And I think that's the rye malt. Uh, it's very clear, has very nice, the head retention is kind of mediocre, which you're going to usually get in a heavily filtered beer and a bright tank carbonation. Although the, the carbonation is nice, it's nice and small bubbles. It's not real big bubbles, which you typically get, so it's a good bright tank, good uh, small filter on there, or small uh, air stone on that. Wow, I'd love to try this on draft. But uh, to me it's like a four, four and a quarter-ish. And, that's, and, and no more. It's it's not quite as clinical as a lot of Sam Adams beers are these days. It does have hints of, of originality and letting the brewers kind of do stuff. But that's where it's kind of shy of that quarter point. It's like, come on, Jim, let, him, let these guys do stuff a little bit more wild than this. But, um, yeah, maybe now I'm starting to slowly get some honey. But my goodness, if I didn't know from the label there was honey in here, I wouldn't even be looking for it. Because I wouldn't notice it, but man, the rye malt is there. You got rye malt and a little bit hints of pine and grass uh, type things from the hops. A little bit of floral from the hops and the nice rye spiciness. Rye malt's a little bit heavier. It tends to produce uh, more uh, proteins and things. A little bit makes the mouth feel very thick, uh, relatively. It's a thicker mouth feel. It's beautiful. I mean, overall, it's really good. Um, as far as pairing this, that bitterness at the back end, hmm. I would pair this with a grilled steak, a flame broiled steak, a good thick one 
with uh, a black peppercorn based rub. Uh, nothing spicy as far as heat, but flavorful, rock salt, peppercorns, um, maybe even something marinated in a little bit of vinegar, uh, oil, olive oil, uh, pasta, a vegetable medley with olive oil in it, salt, maybe a little bit of paprika in that rub, just a little bit. But I definitely, maybe orzo instead of pasta, but I definitely wouldn't do a baked potato. Not with this, it's too thick. This is too thick to have with something like that. So you need some kind of starch. It's not as thick a, a, a thing. And then the vegetables are really gonna help. Especially if they were grilled. You got carrots and and green beans and you know, not corn, Man, maybe corn and then uh, the corn off the cob afterwards. But just kind of, this is a good grilling beer. You know, this is in the fall. And just grill everything. Grill your vegetables. Obviously, you can't grill your pasta. Grill your meat. I really wouldn't do this with grilled chicken. Um, maybe if you did chicken, uh, grilled chicken with um, a barbecue sauce that's not very sweet at all. That's the problem. That bitterness is going to get really bad if you have it with sweet, but you can have it with tangy. Um, maybe some sweet and sour kind of things. But, uh, man, to me, this is like a good T-bone. Uh, grilled well with a good rub that's kind of, kind of a black pepper based rub and some vegetables have similar seasoning all grilled mm. sliced long wise maybe on a kebab do some uh, bell peppers and onions and stuff like that put on a kebab and grill them that way that would work too carrots mm. but quite good now I'm really hungry all right but anyway, four out of five is what I give this, maybe four and a quarter. There is, a, I'm slowly getting a little bit of sweetness from the honey, but it, again, I don't know how much of it's just, you know, uh, it's been suggested because of the label, and I'm really, really looking for it, and I want to say, yeah, I can get the honey, but I don't, I don't think so. I think it's mostly the Ryan hops, but good anyway. So there you go. Have you had this beer? Let me know what you think. Please share the videos on every form of social media you've got. And thanks for stopping by so much. And let me know what beers you want to see reviewed right here on this channel, Lake TV. Bye.